It's like 26 years, and now the 10 days are going to be the hardest. <laughs> Saturday, I am just going to want to sleep all day, so Sunday just comes faster. Yes. Or you'd be staying up late Saturday praying that Showtime uploads the on-demand really early at midnight. Oh, don't even. Just saying. Don't put ideas in my head. Just saying. So. <laughs> all right. So uh, today, I- though. Uh, we are going to talk about Beyond Life and Death, which, well, aka the original series finale. Unfortunately, Charles. Yes. We have something else to talk about. Oh, yes, we do. I'm guessing you're talking about Michael Parks. I am talking about Bronson himself, <laughs> Michael Parks, Jean Reno. Yes. Uh, not- sadly, once again, we lose another member of the original peak series, twin peak series with Jean Reno going up into that big black lodge in the sky. Candy is dandy. Yeah. But I feel like we've done one episode where we don't have to shout out. Yes. Well, to be to, fair, to, you know, we were, we were recording it. We were at least up until now we were recording on a monthly basis. So true. the, the odds are a little greater that way. That somebody, but it does seem weird that, yeah, four out of the five podcasts, pretty much. <laughs> I think we, we're, we're always talking about somebody that we've lost, and it's. Okay. Or is it, I want to say, I'm hoping it's just three out of the five, but I'm afraid it's closer to four. I know. It's but not yeah, cool. Yeah. So now, if we lose somebody else, because we were, we're going to be, I'm presuming we're going to be recording in just a couple weeks. After the new episode, twelve days probably. 12 like twelve days. days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, hopefully, nobody dies in the span of ten days or what have you, ten or twelve days. And, and th- I mean, no one. And if it do- and if somebody does from the Twin Peaks uh, world, then yeah, I'm going to get a little creeped out. A little bit creeped out. We might and have I to. Mean- we might have to end the podcast just to keep everybody else alive. Just for the safety of David Duchovny and yeah. Richard Bamer and everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kyle McLaughlin, Sherilyn Finn. You know, like, we don't want to lose anybody else. No, we do not. And we don't want to lose anyone in general, not just yeah. Twin Peaks people. But we, I, know that, I know that I, for one, really, really hate the Renaults. So, but yeah. I love yeah. Michael Parks. Right. He's so good at what he did. What he was so good at what he did, and they were all so disgusting and creepy in their own way. Like Jacques, just creeped me out. Like he was just that sort of like slime. Well, he was a slimy French Canadian. That guy down the street that you're never allowed to ride your bike past. He's yes. that kind of creepy. Whereas. And, you know, Bernard is just a flunky. I mean, he's just a little toady of his older brothers. He's got nothing going for him. But Jean Renault? Jean, Jean was the brains behind the Renaults. Jean will kill you and think nothing of it. So he was he was not just creepy. He was he was downright scary. He was a downright scary dude. Yes, he was. I mean, he was only in five episodes. But five but, strong episodes. But he left a he left quite an impression. Yeah, he very much did. So I would say so. So, yeah, I was um, as far as Michael Parks goes. I was also a fan of him from. I'm a big Quentin Tarantino movie fan. Kill Bill, yeah. Kill, well, the Kill Bill movies. He's in Django Unchained. 
Um, he's in Death Proof. So yeah, he Tarantino loved the guy. Apparently, kept using him over and over. And uh, yeah, so it's it's just, it's it's that's how I kind of got to know. I mean. Obviously, I watched him in Twin Peaks first, so every time he would turn up in a Tarantino movie, I'm like, oh, a Jean Reno in a, right. Tar- in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah, and I... Like, he wasn't Michael I, Parks to me. He was just Jean Reno in a Tarantino flick. They, I, have, I have a lot of those actors that are... that I refer to by their... Character name? Character name. And he's definitely one of them. Right. But, uh, yeah, and unfortunately, this is a shameful thing for me to admit but Django Unchained is still on my to watch list I still haven't seen that one it's it's occasionally unsettling movie it's not you my it's pretty it's, much everything Quentin Tarantino has I, ever done I agree but it's not my favorite Tarantino movie it's one okay. it was one of those I didn't feel like I wanted to buy and add in my collection I've watched it I understand and if it's on I might catch it you know, like if it's on cable or something I might check it out for a little bit but I'm not going to hang with it I understand. It's not so, the. Yeah. It's not it's, the I don't, I, don't, I don't really hold it up to his, like his other films, like Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction or the Kill Bill movies. Right. So. Right. It's on that lower tier, as far as I'm concerned. I gotcha. Not one of those fond. Right. Childhood memories of the. Uh, <laughs> of, the of Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah. It was fun to watch. You know, the first time, but it's not something I I care to revisit over and over again. Yeah, it's not a must own. I gotcha. Yeah, I got great you. performances oh. though, especially by Leonardo DiCaprio. He's really good in it. He's always good, and I and I hate how much I have to like him because right. he's just he's perfect. Yeah, he's his life is far too perfect. I want. <laughs> I, I hate him having his life. Well, I just I just hate that I have to admit that he's really good. You yeah. know, he's he's as cocky as he is because he can be. Right. I mean, if, he is just that good. If you got the anyway. skills to back it up, yeah. So yes, enough about Ter- or Leonardo DiCaprio, Rand. So let's God- get back to Twin Peaks. Godspeed, Michael Parks. Yes, Godspeed, Michael Parks, and thank you for being such a douchebaggy villain on Twin thank Peaks. Thank you for being so just awful. Yes. <laughs> oh, Blackie. Oh, yes. Oh my. Oh, <laughs> they just—they're terrifying and just creepy. Ugh. Hello, Agent Cooper. <laughs> I like the, I love the way he said Cooper. He said Cooper. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Just rolled it off with that French accent. It's great. Yep. He was All perfect. Right. All right. So uh hopefully good news though for before between now and next week. No 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 more deaths, please. I'm gonna please. start I'm gonna start shipping every Twin Peaks cast member that's still alive vitamins or something. <laughs> Seriously. In the mail. Like, Just, like Take a one a day, you know, for crying yeah. out loud. <laughs> like like one a day and then airborne. <laughs> or like and... maybe some like bottles of orange juice and right. something. Come on. Get those <laughs> get those immune systems up, people. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So we're gonna talk about Beyond Life and Death. Uh this was uh aired this original series finale aired on June tenth. Monday, 19, June tenth, nineteen ninety one, just six days before my birthday. That's right. Yep. So, uh, written by Mark Frost, Harley Payton, and Robert Engels, with a little David Lynch thrown in there. Just with a little David Lynch peppered in for, Ex- for exactly, flavor. exactly for seasoning. <laughs> and uh, of course, directed by David Lynch. Yes. So, so first thing I want to talk about, uh, or at least bring up to for you, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Which the is, love lady stole oh, my truck. I love Pete in that scene. It's a, such a short scene, but I love him in it. And even when she comes in the room, yeah, he's and he still he's like, "Where's my truck?" And they're yeah, like, he's, "She yeah. didn't steal your truck." And he just gives her that side eye, like it looked like her. Yeah, Pete. Pete, or no, I mean Pete. Uh, Cooper has to like emphasize, Pete. Now look, look, Pete. Uh, the log lady. You know, it was Wyndham Earl dressed as the log lady. Wyndham Earl stole your truck dressed as the log lady. And he's still, like, not quite trusting the yeah, log he, lady. Yeah, he's still giving her the side eye. <laughs> he just can't he's believe just like, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, does not compute, as far as Pete 
Yeah, or just like you know, you just can't trust it. Well, since we've it, gone, it, Pete's from, like going to the uh, log lady, pointing his fingers at his eyes, going, "I see you. I'm, I'm I see. Well. I see you." Yeah. Since we've jumped from first episode to last episode, yes, I'm gonna give a little background on who Wyndham Earl actually is. Yeah, please do. First of all. Uh, Wyndham Earl is yet another example of why it's very dangerous to your physical and mental health to work for Gordon Cole. He was... Right, right. He used to be Cooper's partner at the FBI. And he was married to a blind lady named Caroline. Oh, was she blind? I wasn't aware of that. She was blind. I missed that part. Yep, she was blind. Mm, okay. And... I should know that. That and Cooper had an affair with her. Yes, they did. And that combined with all of Gordon Cole's red dress cases or whatever yep. drove Wyndham Earl completely insane. Yes. And he has come to Twin Peaks for Dale Cooper. Revenge. He is the he is yep. the Count of Twin Peaks Christo. Yes. And he's there specifically to end Dale Cooper once and for all. And it just happens to be this place with a forest full of supernatural evil. So he is just reveling in all of that. We don't know exactly how he found out about all this. We're not exactly sure how he found out about that. Unless it was just because it was he was you know, working with Cooper on Cole's Blue Rose cases. Right. Somehow he stumbled across it. Right. And that's the thing. I mean, he he was probably in on Teresa Banks and he was probably in on a lot of that stuff. And with what Chet and Sam were doing. So as part of the FBI, he did, he was aware of what's going on. So what he's been doing in town to test Cooper, who for most of this season has been working for the Twin Peaks Sheriff's Department because he was put on leave from the FBI. Right. Is right. he has a chess game going and every time he takes a piece, he kills somebody. Right. And he has a lackey working for him who is a brain damaged Leo Johnson that he has one of those electronic dog collars on that he can Control him. Shock, and, like a shock collar. Yeah. Like a shock collar. Yep. He's controlling him and doing his bidding and they're just in the woods, just plotting insane yeah. mayhem. Yeah. It's basically crazy super villain in the woods, essentially. Yes. Uh, hatching his evil plan um, with, yeah, with torturing Leo, like psychologically, physically. And Did you the process. think at all in season one that you would ever feel sorry for Leo Johnson? <laughs> I still kind of didn't feel sorry for Leo in season two, but I could see why you might. Well, I, he sort of, he, he redeemed himself a little bit for me when Wyndham Earl is showing him the Queens. Right. And he sees that one of them is Shelly and he says, not Shelly. I love Shelley. Like right. he really, he's he's a he's a terrible person, but he really does love Shelley, mm. and so he's going to try and escape and kill Wyndham Earl, and doesn't realize that the shot collar isn't a remote; it's connected to him. So he goes to shock Wyndham Earl and just winds up shocking himself. And I felt yeah. kind of bad for him in that yeah, moment. Yeah, it, 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 it was pretty pathetic. That was a little bit pathetic. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. But yeah, yeah, I I totally agree with you that he did have those. At least he he was concerned about Shelley. He was afraid that Wyndham Earl would obviously kill Shelley, um, knowing what Wyndham Earl was capable of. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, as far as Leo goes, though, you have to wonder. Well, you know, like the only person that gets to abuse Shelley is me. And I I think it I think it it gives you an insight into why Shelley might have married him in the first place. You know, he was this right, the, the, cool guy the, the, with the flashy car and, and he obviously would have, you know, until he revealed himself as the 
piece of crap abusive husband that I think she probably thought that anybody comes near me, he's going to, he's going to protect me. Right. No one's going to mess with me if he's around. And unfortunately he wound up being the one who messed with her. But I I always thought that kind of gave you an insight into the part of him that made him appealing to Shelly. Well, obviously, yeah, you're right. Because, yeah, there had to be something there. Something besides initially. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, there had to be some kind of draw, presumably. But. Right. And and then maybe maybe once, you know, once they got married and moved in, then he maybe just completely flipped on her. What he really wanted was a maid he didn't have to pay. Exactly. According to Shelly. Yep. And then that infamous sock drawer got. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Soap in the sock. Oh, he's that horrible. Was, that, that was the word. That that was such a stunning moment to me. I know we're we're talking about the finale, but yeah, just going back to that just brought that up. Oh yeah. He's, All right. Yeah. So yeah, and um, Pete Martell in this scene. Uh, Pete is was the person that gets recruited by Cooper and Harry because turns out Pete's a chess expert. Yes, he is. And is capable of stalemating um, when the Merle's moves, or at least tries to um, keep him, keep the pieces on the board long enough so that hopefully Cooper and Harry can track down when the Merle before somebody else dies. Right. And they're doing their best, but based on how the board is right now. Yeah. There's at least one more. There's at least one more piece that's got to go before they can stalemate him. Right. So they're trying to catch him before he gets to that point. Yes. And so we t- and we talked about the uh, log lady. So the log lady shows up. Um. She happens to bring a like a like a preserve jar filled with that lovely engine oil. That scorch, presu- engine oil. scorch engine oil, which, according to her, her husband gave her before he died. This is an opening to a gateway. Right. So presumably yes. he got the old preserve jar and scooped it right out from under the sycamore tree. I love that song. I love that song too, Jimmy Scott. And we'll get into I, that. We got to get into that later, but. Yeah, so, uh, and then, um, just so happens, because, hey, it's the series finale, uh, Ronit Pulaski turns up. She's looking good. She She's is looking, looking good. good. She's got her hair did, and... She yeah, can talk. Yeah. She's standing up. She's doing well. Yeah, she she ditched those um, strands of rope, <laughs> of Finley's fine twine. Finley's fine point. She's out of the hospital. She's doing yeah, better. Yeah, she's doing better. So, but it was, but it I was, was gonna, nice to see that she's doing better. It is. But then, of course, um, you know, Cooper needs to test a theory. Here, smell this. Yeah, here, smell this. And, of course, that upsets uh, Ronette, brings the whole flood, a flood of memories back of her traumatic experience. And uh, we get confirmation that, hey... That was the same engine oil that uh, was found in the train car. On the train. Yep. When Laura was killed. Let Laura was murdered. So it all it's all connected. It's all coming full circle. It's all connected. All right. So um, the uh, so let's move on to the next topic I want to bring up. Uh, hey, where are my drape runners? Oh, Nadine, who was another contestant in the Miss Twin Peaks contest. Right. The episode previous to this, we see the Miss Twin Peaks contest, which is how Wyndham Earl is going to decide his next victim. Whoever wins Miss Twin Peaks gets a crown and a scholarship, and you get to die. (laughs) So all of our favorite... It's funny how they don't mention that during the pageant. Yeah, Mayor Milford never said anything about that. Is this so, thing on? Oh, is this Mayor thing Milford, on? Is this thing on? And uh, yeah, Mayor Milford. Um, yeah, he was getting some action from the Miss Twin Peaks. Well, yeah, because we had Lana. 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 She wants to win. 
the Miss Twin Peaks contest. Yeah. So he's he's supposed to help rig the other voters to vote for her, but Annie gives the best speech, and so Annie wins. Yeah, even and Lana is not happy because Lana is all you were supposed to vote for me. She and and she's been I was supposed to win. With, she's been sleeping with Mayor Milford and Dick Tremaine to try and get votes and it right. still didn't work. So what happens is after after they announce that Annie has won and all of our Twin Peaks ladies are in the in the in the pageant, you know, Shelley's there, Don is there, Audrey's there, and Nadine is there because of course Nadine has had a head injury that's making her think she's 17 again. Yes. So pandemonium ensues. The lights go out. Wyndham Earl snatches her off the stage. Cooper goes into another place. Ferret, sees... Ferrets go running. Yes. <laughs> ferrets go running. Cooper sees the giant and the giant's trying to warn him of what's going on. And then all of a sudden, oh. and then all of a sudden everything comes back. Annie's gone and everybody's going crazy. And Nadine's been hit on the head again. Typical by a sandbag. By a sandbag. Typical TV trope of get hit on the head once, get amnesia, get hit yeah. on the head again, yeah. you're cured. Yeah. So she's at home. Mike is there. She's been dating Mike because, of course, do you have any idea what a combination of superhuman strength and sexual maturity can result in? So, of course, she's been dating Mike. But Mike actually really loves her. But she doesn't know who he is and is wanting to know why Norma is in the house and where are my drape runners because her memory's back now. So and she just she angrily works. she angrily like yells at Mike like Who are you? Get away from me! Get her house. Yeah, she totally freaks out. So is this is this another? And you feel and you feel really bad for Mike. For, Never thought that would happen, did you? No, no, because <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, I felt more better more for Mike than I did for Leo, but. Yeah, I did feel, and I really felt bad for Norma because is this, is this the end for and, Norma? And Ed, and, Ed? And, and Ed, because it's like, hey, everything's going to work out. Oh, here we are in the finale, and oh boy, Yank goes the uh, the the, yep. uh, the carpet and pulls everything the rug right out from underneath. Right out from under him. Tune in next week to Invitation to, to Love. love. So yeah, we don't know. I that's the that's the one thing I'm really curious about is do Ed and Nadine still go through with their divorce after this? I have to think probably not. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Big Ed's a Well remember remember we found out uh while well, we as we went through um the secret history of Twin Peaks that um that Norma's husband, Hank, is dead. Right. So she's in the clear. But is Ed able to break it off with Nadine? Is he finally going to get the, the cojones to... Well, and that's the thing. I mean, Ed's relationship with Nadine has always been sort of motivated by guilt. Yes. Tragic guilt. He, he sort of married her because he shot her eye out. So... Yeah. You know, I, you know, I sort of, you know, nobody's happy in that relationship. So I'm sort of hoping yeah. that things go the way they should, but I don't know. Guess we'll Ten find days. it. 10 days we'll find out. I it, hope so. It, it, it seems so weird that it's so close, doesn't it? I know. I'm so excited. It's it, it's like David Lynch surreal to me that we're this it's close David to. Levels of surreal, how yes. close it is. Yeah. At least as far as, yeah. So yeah, poor, uh, poor Nadine. She's all like, she realizes she's what? I'm 37, you moron. I'm 35, you moron. Yeah. Can remember the exact and age, but yeah. Do they, do they not look older than we did when we were 35? <laughs> well, that's cause we're just naturally good looking here, but. I just, I just feel like they just looked like more adults than I felt like I was in 35, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you almost have to think that, uh, well, Nadine, you want to tack on maybe another five years at least on that one, but... Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> let's give her the benefit of the doubt. We, we certainly... Oh, of course. No, I'm just yeah. I'm just saying, you know, age feels like such a relative thing, so... Well, sometimes it is. 
Yes, that's true. So uh, next I want to talk about Under the Sycamore (laughs) Tree And I'll see you. Yeah, so Jimmy Scott. um, Wow. I mean, this never heard of that guy before Twin Peaks. But but oh, what a phenomenal voice. song, and the and the fact that they actually brought him in as opposed to just playing the song. Right, he's in the lodge. He, he's he's in the lodge, and you know he gets his little like old school microphone stand and just belts it out, and it's phenomenal. And that whole scene where just you know the the lighting is so like dramatic. Yes, it is, and even. Yeah, it's really powerful. You got that Cooper there, song. and then Cooper, like Cooper's face when the strobe light effect hits, mm-hmm. where he's just kind of like checking out and going as he's like experience, like acclimating to this realm. He's just getting absorbed by the lodge, and right. that song, if if anyone's unfamiliar with it, is on the Fire Walk with Me soundtrack. Yes, and it's. So, well, that soundtrack's so worth it anyway, whether you get it on CD or the recent vinyl release from Mondo, but it's it's so powerful. I was so glad that that, that was included on the, tw- on the Fire Walk With Me soundtrack, because uh, when it came, when, you know, like after, after season two aired, the finale aired, all we had at the time was the season one soundtrack. That was it? That was it. No season two soundtrack yet. No season two soundtrack for like fifteen years. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, that's a separate. That's a separate rant. But yes. But think so. Like, lo- would have loved to have that song, but obviously, um, you know, it wasn't going to happen until Fire Walk with Me came out, and thankfully they put it on there. Yes. Yes. And so I was able to get a copy. So that was great, and I've loved it ever since. Oh, I, I absolutely adore that song. Yeah, and it's one of those you don't you don't want to put it you don't want to put it like on your iPod in like a favorite songs mix or anything like no, that. No, no, no. You just kind of stop what you're doing when it comes on, and you just sit and you listen to it, and you just absorb it. And I actually, uh, this is a uh, little little shameful pop culture confession of mine. I, um, for those of you in the Central Ohio area. The Lazarus location, which became a Macy's location at Kingsdale in Upper Arlington, uh, yes, uh, has closed, and they're still not sure what to do with the building. But when it first closed, I wasn't sure if it was going to get torn down or what was going to happen. So I went over there with my camera and that song playing in my car stereo. And took oh. pictures of the sycamore tree that is outside. It was the uh, there was a giant sycamore tree at that location, even to the point where there were different exits, and they would tell you what street you were on. But that exit was the sycamore exit. Okay, so so, so you knew that going there. Mm-hmm. Okay. I went there specifically so, so you, to so you pl- of the sycamore tree while I listened to under the sycamore tree. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's. I I, yeah. I I bow down to your geeking. That that's it. That's like a a geek level stratus. You know, like in the stratosphere. That's awesome. My pop culture geekiness is very that, ceremonial. That, that that is strong. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is awesome. I respect that. I respect your game so much now. Thank you. <laughs> that was fantastic. That's great. Um. Because, yeah, I'm the kind of guy that, like, uh, will listen to um, soundtrack albums of the movie that I just watched in the theater and li- on the way home from the movie theater. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm so, one of those people that I I don't want to hear the soundtrack before I see the movie. Okay. Because, because I know it will give it away. You know, I don't want a track listing of something uh-huh. that'll tell me, like, like, here's a good example. Like, I... The the guy I was dating when episode one came out was listening to the soundtrack like the day we were going to go see the movie. Track listing the death of Qui Gon Jinn. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. That was that was that. that was a big spoiler. That was a huge yeah, spoiler. For that idiot. <laughs> Especially since it was like one of the few like really good scenes in the movie. 
Yeah, one of like the five minutes that's worth a damn. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for ruining that. <laughs> so yeah, I try to stay away from track listings, but there have been there have been times when I have been, you know, on my phone in the theater on Amazon, like, okay, does this have a soundtrack or an order? So Yeah, see I'm the I'm the kind of like the reverse. I I like I I prefer getting the soundtrack before the movie so that I can start to kind of memorize it. Oh, okay. And then when I go into the movie, I can appreciate the the score more. Gotcha. Gotcha. As, you know, certain scenes are playing. And then when I hear it again, I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. I remember that scene perfectly. Well, my friend Troy, when he, he bought the Fire Walk With Me soundtrack before he saw the movie, and because, you know, he, like most of us, are just – huge Angelo Badalamenti nerds after seeing Twin Peaks. So, right. and I, I remember him telling me that he was listening to the pink room and he's like, Oh, someone's doing it in this part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he went and saw the movie. He's like, called it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I'd have to say, yes, he did. Yes, he did. And that's, sometimes, so that's kind of an understatement it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Sometimes soundtracks give a little too much away for me. So that's why I don't, I, I, I try not. I I get where you're coming from. I think that if they do release a soundtrack for Blade Runner 2049, right? I'm gonna own that the second it comes out. I think that's gonna be. I'm gonna make well, a rare. Based on the trailers, yeah, it's just like. Well, I didn't yeah. think anybody could really capture that Vangelis sound or Vangelis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it certainly seems that way, doesn't it? Yes. And yeah, obviously, I'm, obviously we. We definitely want a new soundtrack for the new Twin Peaks series. Yes, please, everyone. Yeah, because just hearing, like, watching, like, the trailers and seeing that this, these little clips at the end where it sounds like there's, like, a tiny hint of new ba Angelo Battlementi music. Just a little hint. Just a littlest hint. Oh, yeah. And so that, yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be a must own. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. All right. So next topic I want to talk about. Got you, Andrew. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So this is uh, the Twin Peaks Savings and Loan Bank, where wackiness where, ensues. Wackiness ensues. Where young Audrey Horn, in an act of civil disobedience, has chained herself to the vault in protest right. of their funding of the Ghostwood Development Project. Not the best time to become politically active. Wrong place, <laughs> wrong time, Audrey. <laughs> especially, yes, as, especially as with, we know, especially with like uh, octogenarian Del Mibler. Yeah, Del Mibler, aka getting and fetching you water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And taking forever and a day to shuffle across the room because apparently and, David Lynch has this obsession with slow-moving old people. Well, at least at the time he did. That's true. Well, in in Twin Peaks, there's you know these people. That's just what they've done forever. Right. So that's what they're going to do. You know, we've got an ancient mayor. We've got an ancient head of the bank. Right. That's just how it works. And the oh, yeah. and the, the old yeah the old waiter at the North, Great Northern. The old waiter. Yep. You know, that and milk then, will cool on you. <laughs> one in the same. Yeah, but one I get the, it. One in the same. Yeah, that's. A little, Getting ahead of myself. So yep. what we find out again in season two is that Andrew Packard, right. who married Josie Packard, who we all thought was dead, is that actually still alive? Dun dun dun. Played, played uh played fantastically. Yes. By O'Hurlihy. Yep. Dan O'Hurley. Yeah. Dan O'Hurley, who is the man. For those of you who have not seen Robocop or Halloween. Right. He, just gonna say to. yep and so and his the man uh, who fired dick jones <laughs> thank you <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so he and his nemesis eckhart yes. played by one of my all-time favorite <sighs> actors david warner yes how many people have fought and have been the devil in a movie david warner that's about it true true so they he has and left it was him. also on Doctor Who, I might add. 
he was on Doctor Who and he was in Star Trek movies. He's in everything. Tron. He's in Tron. He's everywhere. he's in Titanic. Yeah, he's everywhere. He's in one of the highest grossing movies of all time because he's David freaking Warner. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's also in one of the best episodes of MST3K, Quest of the Delta Knights. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, it's filmed in Renaissance Fair. It's fantastic. Oh, I need to track that down. I didn't realize he was in it. I didn't realize David Warner was in a MST three K. I gotta look I gotta look that one up. Yes, Quest of the Delta Knights. It's fantastic. Okay. All right. Yes, I'm I'm writing myself a note right now. Yes. (laughs) Also also starring Olivia Hussey of Romeo and Juliet. Okay. And Sarah Douglas of Superman Two fame. Right. She's Ursa. Ursa. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, starring isn't really a good, she's in it for yeah. like three minutes, but she'll, she's in it. <laughs> but it's a really important three minutes. Yeah. It's really awesome. Three yeah, minutes. Really. So, so David Warner has left Andrew and his sister a box, a yeah, puzzle Catherine, box. Catherine, yeah. yeah. A puzzle box that has symbols on it and they have to figure it out. And it turns out if you, it's like Zodiac dates. And if you touch the date that the package arrived, it opens, and there's a key inside. Keys to a safety deposit box. Well, this is after it gets down to one box that they can't open. So well, they, and can't it, so, they stomp on it. Yeah, and then Andrew gets all pissed, and he shoots the box. <laughs> yes, exactly. He just shoots it, and then a key comes out. Yeah. He fires out and three then, shots. I think one of them actually hits the box, <laughs> and, and the then, key pops out. Andrew and, and Catherine, of course, do not trust each other. So the key is kept in Can't a case. Can't imagine why. Yeah, I know. Imagine that. The Packards? What yeah. do you... So it's in a cake It's in a cake plate with the cake, lid on it. Yeah, So cake everyone dish. can see it at all times. But, of course, Andrew gets up in the middle of the night and swaps it out. And, and I'm Pete, actually surprised that when he swaps it out... And Pete spots him doing this. Yes, Pete finds him. But I'm actually surprised that when Andrew swaps it out, Catherine hasn't already done that. I'm actually shocked that I that agree. actually happened. So, but yes, the key opens a safety deposit box at the Twin Peaks Savings and Loan. And what's in the safety deposit and, box? Well, gee, a nice little surprise left from the uh, the nice little uh, from David Warner's character that um, Eckhart. Eckhart Thomas Eckhart. Thank you, and. It's a nice little message. It says, got you, Andrew. And guess what? There's dynamite. It's a bomb. And it blows up real good. It, blows up, it blows up and uh, Mr. Uh, Dale the Bankman slash Harry Carey's glasses go flying <laughs> through the air. Along with like some dollar bills. I don't think there's a lot of money. In the right. Alone. Yeah. It's just one dollar <laughs> that fall everywhere. <laughs> so needless to say, I think it's a safe bet that Del Mibbler checked out. I'm pretty sure he checked out. Yeah. I th- I'm I'm thinking. And as we know from uh, the secret history of Twin Peaks, that as long as it, what we read was true, I hope so. That Audrey survives because Pete, in a nice little like surprisingly, uh, well not very really surprisingly because he is kind of a more of a noble character on Twin Peaks, yeah, one, of the, one of the more noble characters. So he basically insert, has, because of his body being placed before Audrey, he takes the brunt of the blast and dies along with Andrew. And I'm of course assuming that's going to be written in the script because right. both Dan O'Hurley and Jack Nance are no longer with us. Right, which makes perfect sense. Yes. And we know that Sherilyn Fenn is returning to the series. Yes, we do know that. So, and if you guys don't follow her Twitter, you totally should. She's a sweet, <laughs> sweet lady. The um, so yeah, we had that, uh, and uh, I guess that's pretty much it for that scene. So that's essentially another cliffhanger that was never resolved. Ten days. Ten days. <laughs> well, unless you count the book, but yeah. Well, unless you count the book, but you know it's. I'm not going to I'm not going to feel better until I see Audrey Horn with my own eyes. It doesn't it's not real until I see her. It's not real until I see it. I want her to be doesn't alive. Count. So bad. Yeah. All right. So next I want to talk about meanwhile meanwhile 
<laughs> All right. No, it's this way. Yeah, that's it. Yes. We're making hand motions. Yeah, we're doing the, we're doing the Laura Palmer hand gesture. Yeah, those just... are, obviously you can't see this, but yeah, <laughs> we're doing the yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is uh, Cooper in the waiting room. Cooper in the waiting room. Yeah. So many things. So in the waiting room. right. So this is essentially more of Dale Cooper in the Black Lodge. Um, well, yeah. now I think we should probably talk about something before we get there. Somebody knows she's there. Or somebody knows he's there. Oh, you mean, well... I mean Sarah Palmer, with her message. Oh, that's right. I thought I thought that happened a little later, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you're right. You're, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. That, um... So, before then, thank you for mentioning that. That, uh... At the Double R Diner... Um... We have a scene, we see like uh, Major Briggs is there with his wife, um, Betty, and they're apparently having lunch or whatever. And then all of a sudden, Dr. Jacoby comes in with Sarah Palmer. Yes. And she's very discombobulated and shaky and yeah, obviously she, upset about something. She, she's out of it more than normal. Mm hmm. And they sit down. Um,. Because that uh, apparently Dr. Kobe says you know, like she's got a message for you. She has a message that she really thinks you need to hear. Right. And... So Sarah, so Sarah looks at Major Briggs, and all of a sudden she speaks in a very distorted voice, and not Twin Peaks distorted, not that backwards, forwards, right. backwards. This is thing. something different, like a low demon kind of voice. Yeah, she says something like. Um, I like I'm in the De the Black Lodge with Dale Cooper. Dale Cooper. Cooper, yes, yeah, really. Just and you almost can't you can barely make it out. She's like, I'm waiting for you. Yes, it's very creepy. And so who? the question: Who is waiting for Major Briggs? Yeah. Exactly. So is there somebody? Yeah, there is there somebody else that we don't a new player. Is it a new player? Is it Bob? Is it Leland? I don't know who it is. Right. It's a very good question. Ten days! So are there warring factions inside the Black Lodge? Or is it well, somebody or is it somebody from the White Lodge? That's trapped. That's right. true. Yeah. Because we do that's one of the things about the show is we never really get to see the White Lodge. No, we don't. So we have no idea really what's involved there. Right, we've never been so lucky to see the White Lodge. Unless it was something like maybe when um, when uh, Major Briggs went missing and there was that blinding white light. Yes, yes, that could be. Or Troy the Horse is in there? I don't know. I don't well, know who's well, there. Dale, well, Dale Cooper said, you know, like, I really have to urinate. Oh, <laughs> thanks thanks for sharing that Dale by the way don't don't, don't even remind me of those ones <laughs> I, just, I just thought it was so absurd <laughs> that, that, that. That's, that's why it stuck in my head we can put that off as long as we possibly can okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing like urinating in the open air <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yes. a bodily function people we're adults here right Right, we're adults here. We know that everyone pees. Yeah, exactly. Let it be known from this day forth that everybody poops. <laughs> anyway. All right, we won't talk about. It. But don't yeah, I just, but it is. But again, this podcast. Don't don't let don't let that happen. We'll never yeah, stop talking. Exactly. So again, another cliffhanger not resolved. Ten days. Ten days. Thank you. So, but when we do see the man from another place in right. the Black Lodge. When you see me again, it won't be me. Yeah, that was a really interesting line, I thought. That is an interesting line. I am not sure what the heck that means. Like, is you know, like, I've always sort of seen him and the giant as, like, harbingers of right. things to come. Are we going to have a new harbinger? Well, Are we I, gonna well what I kind of wonder is, um, there's been no mention of Michael Anderson, the guy who plays the little man from another place being in the new series. So I'm wondering if that that line will be used to explain a replacement for him. Oh boy. Unless <laughs> unless 
Laura acts as, as his replacement or something. Possibly. I don't know. Possibly. I mean, I'm just speculating here, obviously. Right? I know I very want to see, I very much want to see him come back. I do too. It wouldn't so, feel, it but doesn't really, Peaks, it wouldn't feel like the Black Lodge without him. It would not feel like the, it wouldn't feel like Twin Peaks without him. Right. So I, I would very much like to see him come back. And I'm hoping this is one of those things that is just being kept out of the ether. That's in what order I'm hoping. Some, some, some little surprises, yeah. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? I I I I will be I will be ecstatic. Same, same, same thing with it. like Harry. Like, wouldn't it be nice to actually have? Yeah. Now I know there's there's been reports that Michael Unkeen, who plays Harry, has quit acting. But it would be nice that if That's they could right. actually. But it would be it's nice if they actually got him to return for just for this. Somehow, I would love it. I would absolutely love it. I think I, the um. The actress and writer Mary Warnoff has said about being in cult films, there's nothing like it and you will never have a more supportive or loyal fan base than if you than you will ever see that when you're in cult films. And and Twin Peaks is a perfect example of that. I know so many of us that have seen things simply because Twin Peaks actors are in them. Right. I think it's just the nature of the beast that with cult films, you, I mean, you have fans normally, but I think cult film fans are much more, uh, rabid. Rabid. Yeah, exactly. They're, well, they're more, pa- they're more passionate to put it delicately. Much more passionate, much more passionate and so, much more enthusiastic, much more obsessive. And so they're going to, they are going to do things like, Right. research what else you've been in and know your name and know what you've done and know where, you know, know where you're going next. They're, es- they're essentially super fans. Super fans. Absolutely. And they are, they're so positive. They, they, they love their fandom and they love the performers in it and they will stick with you. Or they might do a Twin Peaks podcast. Just saying. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, you know, I've been sticking with these actors for, you know, Saw Sleepwalkers for God's sake. All right. <laughs> so, and I love kitties. Right. And I still watch Sleepwalkers. I I only watch Psych because of the Twin Peaks episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Psych Twin Peaks episode was fantastic. Dual Dual Spires. And dual Spires. Yes, so good. Yep. And um, I don't know if you ever saw also a Showtime show that uh, late 90s that was Sherilyn Fenn's show, Rude Awakening. I know of it, but yeah, but I never watched it. She plays a washed up soap star that's been yeah. that's gone through rehab and is now in Addicts Anonymous and it's all of her friends. And it was a great it was a great show. I loved it. So I was, yeah, those... I, was I was the one disappointed that um, when on the TV show Birds of Prey, of all things. Oh, yeah. Sher- Sherilyn Fenn was supposed to be the um, the character of Harley Quinn on that series. And they and, replaced and they, her. They yes. replaced her with Mia Sarah from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Nothing wrong with Mia Sarah? Nothing wrong. I thought she did a great job. But part of me was just mm-hmm. like seriously let down. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you didn't use yeah. Sherilyn Fenn? Come on. Well, and Sherilyn Fenn, too, is... Did you see the uh, Law and Order with Sherilyn Fenn? No. Oh, where she was having an affair with her stepson, and oh, it's, yeah. oh my goodness, it was it was quite. She don't, did, don't we get she enough of that on Twin stuff. Peaks? I mean, just saying. Yeah, she did quite a good. She did a fantastic <laughs> job in that. So, but uh, but yeah, if any yeah if anybody from Twin Peaks is in something, I'm watching it. Yeah. So all right, so um, come here, back, Michael Antkeen. Yeah, please, that would be great. Um, so yeah, we have the, um, Cooper in the waiting room. We have this whole business where he gets offered coffee, coffee, coffee. coffee. Yeah. Ah. And so like, you know, they, they, we go through this weird montage where, or a sequence where he, he drinks, he, he starts to drink it and it's solid. And then he turns the cup over and liquid, you know, like it, it's back to liquid. And then, then it turns into like this syrupy goo, sludgy yeah, stuff. Yeah, sludgy, yeah, sludgy stuff. 
I've always wondered is maybe that black. That's what I, that's what I was thinking. That maybe it was a yeah, black engine I've always, oil. I've always wondered that if it was scorched engine oil. Yeah. In the instead of coffee. Yeah, I kind of wondered that. That's that's yeah, I wondered that as well because uh, it it would be nice, you know. And that, but it's never explained that way, unfortunately. No. Well, the, the black lodge never explains itself. Well, you got to leave something up to the imagination, as Twin Peaks does in sure. spades. But yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, in the uh, we we have the um, the elderly waiter returns, obviously, and we get confirmation that the elderly waiter. And the giant are, as you pointed out, one and the, the same. same. Yeah. So they're the same character. So apparently the giant was really messing with Cooper after he got shot at the beginning of season two. <laughs> Hell of a way to kill a wood tick. Yeah. It's like, hey, I could go for help or something, but, you know, I'm going to stand here and, and talk to you about milk. Yes. <laughs> And and act all befuddled. And fortunately, yes, fortunately, somebody does find Cooper, and he's fine. But yeah, uh, yeah he comes. That's unfortunately, that's who finds him is the is the octogenarian plus yeah. waiter of the hotel. <laughs> um. So, and then at that point, after the whole coffee sequence, um, the little man from another place starts rubbing his hands. And he mm-hmm. says, wow, Bob, wow. Oh, Bob. Oh. And then we get this, like, burst of flame that fills the screen. Yes. And at that point, um, yeah, he says, like, you know, fire, walk with me. And um, and that's when things take a seriously dark turn. Seriously dark turn and just... It, it it doesn't make a lot of linear sense, but you know that this is just foreboding. This right, is not going right. to end well. Yeah. Maddie's there. Laura's yeah. there. Doppelganger. Doppelganger. And then, and, and Cooper is just walking. Aimlessly. Walking through, aimlessly, but he, you know, he keeps coming back to what looks like to us the same exact room. And just different things are there. And then he's bleeding. Right. It's well, like the, he's... Well, been, this is... After, before that, though, the little man from another place says, wrong way. Wrong way. Yes. So and that's so, when you know, like, okay, shit just got real, yo. <laughs> yep. There's a path for Cooper, and he's not following it the way he's supposed to, and it's not going to end well. Right. So then he realizes that he's bleeding. Like, he's... Maybe he's been shot again? I was thinking that maybe he has been stabbed. He's been stabbed. Yeah. And so then he can sort of follow his own footprints because they're bloody. Right. Then he sees himself on the ground with a lady in a flowered dress. Right. Who at first is Caroline, and then she turns into Annie. But then Annie with the voice of Caroline says, I saw the face of the man who killed me. It was her husband. Right. And at that point, Cooper is just like, wait, you're not dead. And and then he, she says, who's Annie? It's me. It's me. And then Caroline is there. And then Annie comes back saying, you must be mistaken. I'm alive. Which is all kinds so of freaky. All this back and forth between two of the three women that Cooper has ever loved in his life. Number one, of course, being his mother, which you would only know if you read if you read the book of My Life, My Tapes. But <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, so he, uh, I mean, these are the two, basically, the two loves of his life that are one he was able to save, and one he's currently trying to save. I mean, that's why he's in there. He's in there because he knows Wyndham Merrill has taken Annie into the lodge. That's why he's there. That's why he goes for. Her. So the question I have, though, is how did Caroline get in the lodge? <sighs> was it was just something that maybe Wyndham Earl did during when he killed her, perhaps? Well, do you remember in Empire Strikes Back, 
I may have wa- I may have watched that movie once or twenty times, but yeah. If you guys haven't seen that movie, Google it. You can probably find it. It's probably on DVD somewhere. Ask your parents. <laughs> <laughs> when Luke is about to go in the cave and face Vader, right? And right. he and he asks Yoda, "What will I find?" And Yoda says, "Only what you take with you." And I think something similar applies to the Black Lodge, that partially. There are things there that draw you in and are waiting for you. And then part of it is you. It, what's in there is what you've brought with you. And because Annie's there, right. Cooper brings memories and spirit of Caroline in there as well because Annie's in there because Wyndham Earl is trying to get back at Cooper because of Caroline. So do you think the Black Lodge is accessing his memories? I think it's accessing both of their both of their energy as to what their motivation is. Because it's not like Cooper fell out of love with Caroline. It's not like they broke up. Wyndham Earl killed her. Right. And Wyndham Earl is there in Twin Peaks to exact revenge upon Cooper for having an affair with Caroline. So the Caroline energy is very, very strong between you know, with, yeah. with Cooper's memory and with Wyndham Earl, you know, Wyndham with, Earl's yeah. Jealousy Wyndham and, and rage. General, general bad juju. Right. So I think they brought her with them when they went in there. Cause she's a motivating factor for both of them. I think, I think Cooper is trying so hard to save Annie because he couldn't save Caroline. Right. I, t- I, t- I, t- I totally agree with that. That he, this is like, he's, he has that guilt and this yes. is my, this is my chance to kind of redeem my own soul in the process. Not only is he going to save Annie, he's, this is redemption for Cooper. Yeah. This is redemption for Cooper and hopefully quote unquote damnation for Wyndham Earl. Right. So at this point, um, Laura shows back up. Oh my God. But. It's doppelganger, but guys. it's but it but it's doppelganger Laura because doppelganger she Laura. because she has the kind of cataract eyes contact lenses in. Yeah, she does. Like she's like blinded, like Caroline, and yeah, like we see Leland in a moment. But I I dare you guys to watch that scene where Laura Palmer screams and not get holy, goosebumps. Holy crap! That shriek that she does—it's oh it's, it's unthearthly. This. The, <laughs> It, it haunts your soul for it does, years. It does. It does. It will just chill you to the bone. And I've I've watched this episode a million times, and every time I see it, I go, "Oh God!" Oh, <laughs> girl's got some pipes. That's all I'm saying. Cheryl Lee she can is. Belt, she can belt it. Cheryl Lee is just an incredible, incredible performer right. with with how she can cha- turn on a dime vocally, and she's 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 just incredible. And I'm glad she's back. So glad she's back. She's so underrated. Yeah. She needs to be in everything. <laughs> well, maybe this will get her more back out into the public. Um, if, if 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 she wants to be, I mean, she could she, just be Laura Palmer for the rest of her life and be happy perfectly with happy with that. And I wouldn't blame her. <laughs> I wouldn't. You have that one great iconic role. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you're, you know, that... It, you see that picture of her, that homecoming picture, and that sums up Twin Peaks for you right there. It does. So uh, at this point, um, that uh, Annie materializes in a black pageant gown. What she was wearing when she was taken. Right. And Wyndham Earl shows up. and Wyndham said. Earl- Saying that he's going to let Annie live if Cooper gives him his soul. And this is where Wyndham Earl meets his match, his game set match. Because Wyndham Earl thinks that he is. So you, it's it's something. Oh, was it here? Sorry, I just, my soundboard just went crazy there for a minute. So it's more like this. Yes, absolutely. It is exactly like that. Yeah. Wyndham Earl thinks that he is 
he is the game master in yeah. this scenario. Yeah, he, he, he's checkmating everybody, but yes, but he can't take your soul. Yeah, I because will Bob's take up. his. I will take his. Yeah, but and, uh, yeah, he just and Bob. Then, up and he's like, okay, and then, who, and then, who, yeah, who, that Bob who, just hoovers who. that soul right out of Wyndham Earl's body, sucks it right <sighs> out of the back of his head in a ball of flame. Yep, yeah, he's yeah, he is not messing around. You, he, you, you basically came into Bob's house right. and tried to run things, and that is not going to end well. That, nope. yeah, Bob's gonna, Bob's gonna do it, and he's gonna show you who's freaking boss Pretty here much. in this. Box. <laughs> And yeah, and it's doesn't end well for Wyndham Earl. <laughs> this is my house. This is my house. This is my house. <laughs> there is, yeah, it's and, and it, you know he just and and he's just sort of like dumbstruck, like oh god, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's just like row, row. <laughs> yeah, seriously, he he's <laughs> don't you know. He he's not uh yeah, he back, is not back. the the king. No. Yeah, no. he's not the king around here. He's not even the rook around here. Right. So So he gets his Yeah, he gets, he gets his ass handed to him. He gets his come up <laughs> at least. Oh, so we so yeah. we do get that little bit of satisfaction in this episode. We get that little bit of satisfaction like look, we're yeah, you think you're controlling this but you not. Right. So Cooper takes the opportunity like okay, Okay, I just watched that. Bye, and tips Bye. out. <laughs> tips out the room. Mm hmm. And, and he just he just run Cooper. Just keep running, but he just keeps running in a circle. He's run Cooper, run. <laughs> oh, but yeah, he he goes from room to room, and of course we we see a, a doppelganger Cooper. Turn up. We see a doppelganger Cooper, and That's... he starts. The doppelganger Cooper starts chasing real Cooper, real Cooper, through a, through yep. a room to room, and then just when you think that Dale Cooper might actually get out of there, bam, got him, and just got him, and Bob's head pops out from the bottom <laughs> of the screen, all smug and like ah <laughs> yes. Yes. And we just were like, oh God, please, 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 please. And then the next scene is Cooper in bed in his room in yeah. the Great North. It's like something like, like, oh. like something like right out of the Wizard of Oz or like, oh, yes. is this yes. all a dream? Right? It's Wizard of Oz. Yes. He's right back to where he he's right back in his room, safe in his bed, and we're thinking, Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. And oh, then we look at the clock and we realize there's like Four minutes of the show left. We're like, uh. Yeah. Now we do get to see the band. Annie was, uh, he did manage to get Annie out of there. He got Annie out. Her face was kind of bloody. It. We don't know why her face was all bloody, but. But she's out. She's out. He got her. He redeemed himself. He saved her. Right. He's back. At the, he's back at the Great Northern. He's resting. The doctor's there. Harry's there. All is right with the world. And then the cliffhanger from hell. That is haunted. Then, that has haunted my soul for twenty-seven years. And then he has to go brush his teeth. Yes, I need Perfectly to brush my. Teeth. I need to brush my teeth. For any human to do, if yeah. you're human, if you're human. If you're not human, you just take the toothpaste and you squeeze it into the sink and you start giggling. Yep. And that's when that's when my soul poor, dies. Yeah, there's pretty much every <laughs> no. That poor little toothpaste tube never saw it coming. Oh, and, and then he and just, then he just stands stands back. He leans his head a little bit back, and you're like, "Wait, what's going on?" And then, bam, hits his oh. head on the mirror with that with that little bit of a there's that little bit of a Charles screen. and I just both did that to our cameras. Yeah, we both just leaned back. Yep, and then, rammed our faces right into our cameras. So, <laughs> just so you now, know. We did, now we didn't break them, so yeah, we were relaxed. We, we about did, this. No, we're 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 still us. But we did but, the Bob uh, lunging move. Uh huh. Yeah, and. I am not going to lie to you. I cried watching this episode today. I rewatched it today and I was crying at right. the end of it. I was like, should I watch this? And I'm like, I haven't seen it. Oh God, God, no. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so traumatic. Cause you're just like, 
He went through all that. He should get his happy ending, but no. No, and he's Agent Cooper. Yeah. He's like he's like the epitome of good. Right. He's he's the beacon of light in everything he touches. And at this point you we were when I know when I watched it live back in the day in 1991, I kept looking oh. at the clock going Okay, how are they going to resolve this? There's only like there's like one minute left. What? What? Six minutes left. Oh my god! They got to yeah. fix this somehow, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Nope. 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 Mark Frost, David Lynch, right there on the screen, and we're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we just we just fell over yeah. the cliff. We lost yep. at Plinko. All of it. <laughs> yeah, we, and a, and a million voices the, cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. So. Yeah, we went over a dollar on the yeah. showcase show. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it was all over for us. And Bob and Bob Barker's just shaking his head, going, "Oh, dumbasses!" Yeah, yeah, and it's it, it, it and was yes. Cooper, yeah, Cooper's okay. like does the mocking tone, you know, like because he's now he's possessed by Bob, as we see from the reflection in the mirror, cracked mirror, cracked mirror. So great metaphor there. Oh. And, and he says, how's Annie? How's Annie? <laughs> how's Annie? And, and he's just sort of mocking. Cackling, cackling and yeah, just mocking Cooper's oh. nobi- nobility. Oh. And goodness. Oh, God, it's and so then, And then, you know, like the, the, you know. Executive producers, Mark Frost, David Lynch, and you're like, no, what? And I think I've told I think I've told this story before, but yes, this was Monday, June 10th, 1991. It was the summertime. The windows were open. Right. And I start screaming. I literally screaming, no, no. <laughs> and my mother comes running in the room. She's like, the windows are open. The neighbors are thinking you're dying. <laughs> but Cooper she's like I don't care shut your mouth <laughs> right but yes I literally screamed and cried the first time I saw this I couldn't I couldn't believe it yeah it yeah. was yeah it was um, and, and, we, and I've, ta- I've had this discussion before on what's what's like the saddest last episode of a television show ever it's this one and, it's this one and and you're tempted you're tempted to say mash you're tempted to say mash quantum leaps kind of like that too because don't start with me about quantum leap don't even because sam never goes home even though his whole thing is about to go home i can't even listen to georgia on my mind without crying right (laughs) to this day so that's a that's a really sad finale too that's a really sad one but this one is like this one's traumatizing. This one is this for me. This one's yeah. the worst. Yeah. This, and Quantum this, Leap is a close, close second. This, but this one, it, by far, is the worst for me. I think this one is like a kick in the teeth. Oh, th- yeah. This one just knocks knocks you, you out did because not, you didn't see it coming at no, all. No, you didn't see it coming, and just anybody but Cooper. Right. Anybody the, but Cooper. The last character you wanted this to happen to. Right, right. It's just you gotta, you gotta be kidding me. Why him? Right. Why Cooper? So it's just. I mean, even Sam, even Doctor Sam Beckett probably spends the rest of eternity helping people. Right. You know. At least and, he, he gets kind of like sort of a happy ending because he's leaping from body to body, helping doing well, good. And, the, and even even better than that, Al stays married to his first wife. He comes home from the war. She's not remarried. They have four daughters and they're living happily ever after. Like that's sort of enough. Right. To sort of make up for the fact that Sam Beckett never came home. But in this, it's just horrible pain. I mean, there's, I mean, and there's good things that happen in this episode. Andy and Lucy are back together. Uh Bobby and Shelly can sort of be together and his parents are happy and the Briggs family's a little bit happier together. Right. And there's some bad things that happen in this episode, like the there. revelation of the horrible Hayward family secret that Benjamin Horn is actually Donna's father. And that's another thing. What happened to Benjamin Horn? Right. Now we know kind of you know, though from the, again, from the book from the secret history of twin peaks that, 
Ben survived. We didn't know. It was another cliffhanger that kind of left us hanging. That Right. But, and yeah, what's going on with what, him now? Yeah, he, is, is he dead? Because he's basically we had um, uh, Donna's father, Doc Hayward, Dr. Hayward, like taking, you know, um, Ben and frustration over what, how things have turned out, the revelation. Yep. That he takes Ben and shoves him into the fireplace and cracks his which head is, open. Which is a which is a very non Doc Hayward move. No. You com- you didn't expect that of him. No. And I mean th- I, I would only I would only expect that of him if it comes to if it comes down to something going wrong with family. But still I would not have expected that. Yeah. But at least it's it sounds like if the book you know, again, if the book is not lying to us right. that he at least he didn't kill Ben. Right, right. And so it's, you know, but then what's good, you know, Donna's about ready to move out. She's got a suitcase. She's furious with her mother. And so, you know, we don't quite know what's going to happen. So some good things, some bad things. But this is just, it's just anybody but Cooper. It's all good. Why we got it? two more Hayward daughters. You know, we, we, we haven't screwed, <laughs> we haven't screwed them up yet. <laughs> well, that one grew up to be in Cecil be demented and that just didn't work out very well. Right. <laughs> It's probably but, the same one that was on uh, The Walking Dead, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, she's also in Dune, so. That's true. That's true, yeah. Yeah. And she was also on uh, Sybil. Oh, you know, I never watched that. Yeah, I, I did because I was a big Moonlighting fan. See, you would think I would because I was a huge Moonlighting fan, but I, I, I just didn't. Right. I think it was that period of when I was in college and... I think most people who worked during college know this. You go to school during the day and then you work at night during primetime television. Right. So I maybe saw like two episodes of ER. <laughs> like there's just. And if you didn't have a, and if you didn't have a VCR back in the day, you were screwed. Or yeah. Or if you needed every single penny for college, the like $6 that videotapes cost was just, you could eat or tape something. Right. So. But, uh, yeah, there's this big chunk of, like, mid-90s TV that I just never saw. <laughs> and I think that's when – I think that's when Sybil was going on that I probably just missed it. So I, I liked it. I liked it. It was – it was – it was – it brought – it introduced Christine Baranski. So. Oh, yes. That's where she first hit the big, you know, public, you know, actually got famous a little bit. So. Well, yeah, I think – well, that and The Ref. Oh, one yeah, my, that too, it, Yes. One of my favorite Christmas movies, but, you know, we can do a Christmas movie podcast another time. Yeah, exactly. So this podcast, however, so uh, so that's basically our episode until 10 days from now. 10 days! 10 days! Where ten days. we get, and uh, yeah, we get uh, new episodes of Twin Peaks at long last. Hopefully we'll get some answers. But it's Twin Peaks, so we may not get the answers until the finale, and then maybe not. And maybe, see, that's the thing. It's like, am I more excited for new answers or new questions? Well, I'm sure we're going to get that too. I'm, I'm like almost more excited for new mysteries. I would like to get some answers to the old questions, but I would like to get new questions in the process. I'm mainly just excited to see old characters again. The nostalgia you know, trip. The nostalgia trip. Just seeing everybody again. I don't. I don't know if everybody out there has seen the new trailer but uh, it just sort of cuts to everybody and i'm just for, for, for the record i just put I, I posted that on our ghostwood uh the twin peace podcast facebook page which yes, you're all you liking right yeah. light right yes thank you for posting that because it uh it's a pretty cool trailer we get new we get incredible. to see some of the new characters at last and we get to see i gotta i gotta say something for hawk Hawk's looking good, Silver Fox, man. Yep. Hawk looks pretty good, but I, uh, I still think he's the new sheriff. I hope so. He's, Sher- he's, Sher- he's highly Sher- qualified. Sheriff Hawk. It's it just rolls right off the tongue. That's so great. So, but then you know, I'm also looking forward to seeing. You know, I'm hoping we're going to see people we haven't yeah. seen in the trailers yet. Yeah. Well, we saw Albert and Gordon. We did see Albert and Gordon, which made me very, very sad. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm hoping we'll see uh, Denise as well. 
I'm very I'm looking very forward to seeing her. Well, there was a, they released a picture of David Duchovny, a still a still shot. Oh, see, I'm trying so, not to look. Just trying to be. I'm trying to be surprised. This is. Well, I did post that on our Ghostwood Facebook page as well. You did, and I scrolled right past it. <laughs> like, <laughs> la la la, not looking, not clicking, I no. Look. Yep. So yeah, no, I, I, I so there. A lot of the things that you have posted, I have scrolled right past just because I don't. I don't, bl- know. I don't blame you. Well, you only have I'm ten days free. to wait. Ten days I'm to wait. Free. Because ten days. Be strong. Be strong. I'm trying. All I gotta. Right. I gotta. I I'm gotta sure, build I'm up sure. my strength with uh, donuts and uh, and pie. Yeah, so. um, and I'm sure I'm not helping with that. So sorry. No, no, no. It's it's it. You know, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna find out sooner or later. It's <laughs> like the thing about the internet. Back back in the day when we didn't know anything was happening ever, unless we subscribed to Starlog or whatever. Fanzine right. out there, you know. I, we had I miss Ele- Starlog so much. I love Starlog. That was a great magazine. I um, I just found a new magazine that I didn't know existed called G Fan, and it's about Godzilla and like kaiju movies. I'm nice. like, this is my new Starlog. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, I like I like SFX. The, the, SFX is good too, and yeah, I like um, the UK publication. But. Yeah, that's that's a really good one, and. uh Oh, what's that? I'll think of it later. Anyway, yeah, yeah. back back then we we had that element of surprise, and now that we have the internet, we can sort of, you know, have like a full eight course meal of surprises. You know, we can whet our appetite whenever we want to. Right. But it's like sometimes it's like finding all your Christmas presents before Christmas morning, and then Christmas morning is like, eh. So I try to keep some stuff secret. So I love what the marketing though for the new series has been so far. It's been because, very minimal because because it's been it's minimalist and it's vague as hell. You mm-hmm. you get you get fleeting images, but you get that darkness tone because it's almost like somebody is like taking photographs because you hear that clicking sound. Yes. That it's like somebody's like in a car or something and they're taking photographs and you don't know what's going on. So it's as that mystery and suspense. And I just love that. And I, th- I think the marketing has been spot on for this and it, because it reveals nothing. You have no clue what's going on. You, you, have, no idea you have no idea what the plot is. All you're seeing is old friends. Right. And it, it's 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 just making you... It's not just wetting your appetite for the new series. It's making you ravenous for it. Yeah. I think it was exactly the way to go with the marketing. In my opinion. I think so too, because it, it, and it could, because it has that built in audience right. of us and we're all grown up now and we are going to be glued to the television and we're going to bring everybody with us that we can. Right. We're going to, you know, people are going to say, "What's the new Twin Peaks?" We're going to say, "Oh my God, it's fabulous!" Yeah, and Twin Peaks is is a show about secrets, so it makes perfect sense to hold on to those secrets as long as possible. Absolutely, and have to Absolutely. like you know, unclench your you know cold, get them out of your cold dead hand. Well, and that was part of the that was part of the beauty of the show is that it it unraveled so slowly, and you had time to pick at it and watch it again, look for symbols and read the diary and read the, my life, my tapes and all those, all those unofficial things that were released, like the, like the travel guide and the twin peaks Gazette and all those things that we had that we just ate up like crazy because we just wanted whatever we we, we, we wanted, wanted more. more. Yeah. And that's and, always, and that's always good to leave your audience wanting more. Oh yes, because they they will. They, I mean, honestly, if the first episode is just shots of people sitting around, like the trailer, yeah, I'll be fine with that. <laughs> it's just every character we're gonna I don't see, care. I just wanted. I just want something. Somewhere. I honestly don't care. It's still a new Twin Peaks episode. I'm gonna be happy. Yeah. Well, hopefully, so. a new, hopefully, a new generation picks it up. It's not that. It, I, hopefully, it does it appeals to more than just 
old farts like us. I hope so. I hope that, and, or at least, and I, or old farts like me, I should say, because well, like us, <laughs> because you're you're eternal. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the young people are into these days. The kids, but I think that the, the kids, the kids these days. Yeah, I think that, I, and I've said this before, that Twin Peaks changed television. There, when you think about the offbeat intelligent television shows they all came after Twin Peaks right. Twin Peaks was the first one to really prove that a television audience doesn't need a laugh track they don't need a recap they don't need the Glenn the classic Glenn Larson everybody laughs at the end of the episode right that you can have this ongoing cerebral ethereal phantasmagoric storyline and people will follow it and they will stay with it and they will understand it and they will love it. There's a, and, there's a Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wrap. No, it's okay. That just without twin peaks, there would not have been a Northern exposure. There wouldn't have been an American Gothic. There wouldn't have been an X files. There wouldn't have been a lost. There wouldn't have been a breaking bad. None of that stuff. There's actually a trailer that addresses this. Oh because, yeah. It's, it's basically, it says, you know, like, um, like, uh, um, oh, but before the 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 games were played, a reference to Game of Thrones. Before they were lost, you know, a reference yes. to Lost. So stuff like that, and it's a it's a it's a great way to to emphasize, like, okay, Twin Peaks was the originator of this mm -hmm. this kind yeah. of like water cooler, you know, like Monday morning or whatever storytelling or like or that that buzzworthy show well and there's there's also that something that you had to like you could talk about and actually discuss because you weren't quite sure what was going on sometimes right and and there have been events in television history like that you know good example who shot jr mm -hmm. but um uh, dallas yes yeah who shot jr i don't know maybe the chick that left the show you know, and it was, it, it wasn't really that much of, and it wasn't that much of a discussion. We were all waiting. And when we saw it, we were all like, oh, yeah, okay. And we just kind of went on with our day, right. you know? And I, I think that with, and this is a thing that you saw with Twin Peaks, and I think you still see it today with certain shows, especially things like Breaking Bad. Right. That, that, was, that was another show that was brought up in the, in the trailer. Yeah. Breaking Bad, which is Bef just a... Before uh, the bad was broken or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something. Before we called Saul. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. I say, I say best, la best last episode of a TV show ever is oh, Breaking, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yeah. Yeah. It's up there. I, I, I will give you that. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's my, my favorite, my personal favorite, but it's up there. Yeah, I think I think it was the, the most well done episode I've, I've ever seen of a last episode of a show. But the you have there, there's always been that stigma with television that and Dabney Coleman said this once uh, back in the 80s. He had a uh, television show called um, Buffalo Bill that right. was sort of billed as this. And that's not the Science of Lambs Buffalo Bill, I might add. No, no, no. no. He's a he's like a blowhard radio talk show host. Yes. And it was sort of it was sort of advertised and written as sort of a smarter comedy. And Dabney Coleman said, you know, and of course it was canceled very early. He said, because you can't make television for intellectual people because intellectual people don't watch television. And Twin Peaks sort that's, of, that's kind of the Star Trek is too cerebral. Thinking, yes. Right? right. And it's that idea that, you know, there is that stigma with the small screen where people will say, Oh, I don't watch TV, except for Twin Peaks. Right. I don't watch TV, except for The X-Files, except for Breaking Bad, except for Game of Thrones. And you started hearing that stuff with Twin Peaks. Oh, I don't watch TV, except for this. It appealed to a different type of TV viewer, is what you're saying. It appealed to a different type of TV viewer, not somebody who is who, not somebody who just, like I said, needs a laugh track. And while there's nothing wrong with the sitcom, there, there have been some classic sitcoms over the years, but I think Twin Peaks broke down some people's veneer when it came to that stigma of... There's snobbery. 
that kill your television stigma yeah that we don't own a tv sort of a thing yep and even and lynch I, now i've read in interviews uh he says he's not doing more films because he feels that the audience has moved to television and I think he's right in a lot of ways because we have so many outlets for television. There's there's Hulu, there's Netflix, there's YouTube. And the productions it's, are, you know, like they'll actually throw money at it. Right. They'll, and, and you'll see things like Netflix. You know, yeah. when Netflix first started, it was getting DVDs through the mail. Now it has one of the best TV shows in the history of television, Stranger Things. Right. It was a Netflix TV show. So you can have these, there's funding from many different places. There's many more avenues for it. Cable television is much, even even regular cable TV like HBO and Showtime, you don't have to have cable. You can just get the app and pay for it by the month. Right. There's this a la carte cable TV. There's. It's only going to get more like that. Yeah, there's the, cult, there's the cult movie network. There's Pluto TV. There's all of those things that you have so many different avenues. And people are just sort of used to watch, to binge watching more cerebral television. And I think young people who have grown up seeing that and who have grown up knowing shows like Lost, shows like X-Files, shows like Breaking Bad, shows like The Walking Dead, that they are able to, they're ready for something like Twin Peaks. If they go, I mean, I'm sure that, and this is a strange thing that I found that there's a, it's a big deal for young people. They love the Golden Girls. Like yeah, the Golden I, I've Pets kind of heard that. I've kind of heard that too. It has this like resurgence of popularity because, I mean, frankly, that was a great show. Let's just admit it. But you know, a lot of times, I think, and, and I'm sure that this, you know, this was us. You know, the 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 shows our parents watched, we wanted nothing to do with. You know, my mother loved Seventy Seven Sunset Strip. I couldn't care less about that show. This was our show. But but I think that young people going backwards, the ones who want, the ones who are, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, let's see, 19, 1991, how old was I in 1991? I was 15 years old. If I, if 15 year old me had just gotten through Stranger Things and wanted something else, Twin Peaks would fill that void perfectly, I think. Right. It would go, it would go very, very well. So I I'm hoping... So. I think so too. I think I think Stranger Things, yeah, it's 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 that kind of like it has that '80s nostalgia, but it also has that kind of um, Twin Peaks or X Files or you know Goonies, Goonies, Erie, Indiana, right. American Gothic, any of those shows about weird ass towns. Yeah, you know, I, Welcome to Night Vale. Yeah, even. I mean, just that sort of idea of this weird ass town has weird stuff going on in it. I think I think that's more in the. Kill me for saying this word. I think that's more in the zeitgeist now. I'm not going to kill you, but <laughs> long story short, too late. I do think yeah. that this I think young people would get would get a kick out of Twin Peaks. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. Uh, let's hope so. Um, OK, so um, do you have a rating? for this episode. Seven out of ten seven out of ten knockworst. Nice. So And it it loses a point because it meant that my one of my favorite shows ended. Yeah. And it loses two points for turning Dale Cooper into Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well I actually I really actually look kinda of like this finale. Um I give it nine shattered mirrors. Ooh, you're just you're just pouring salt in the wound with that yes, rating. Yes, I am. <laughs> now, the reason I took off the point, obviously, is because of that damn cliffhanger that has haunted my soul for the past 27 years. And it's not even it, – it, it's at the point now for me that it's like I've lived with it or so long. 26 it's not, years, but yeah. Not even the fact that it's a cliffhanger. It's the fact that it just happened in the first place. Yes. <laughs> so hard. You would have got the 10 for me, but – no, you have to screw over Dale Cooper and trap him in the Black Lodge for a quarter century. Yes, it's a fantastic episode. It's just it's it's so painful it loses three points for chipping away at my <laughs> chipping at my away soul. at my soul. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be a common theme for the episodes we review here. Or movies. Yep. 
All right. So next time on Ghostwood, we are going to talk about the return or whatever they end up calling these episodes. Parts one and two, the two hour series premiere of brand new Twin Peaks. I can't even. It's like it's like Christmas. It's like harder to wait than Christmas. Exactly. Oh, so exciting. I totally agree. So, yeah, needless to say, I'm going to stay up late on Saturday just because I want to, just for that <laughs> chance, that I can hit the on demand and it will magically appear. But, well, if you do, we'll don't see. tell me anything. No, I'm I gonna... won't. No, I won't. Yes. I won't. But, yeah, just tempting. They probably it's... won't. It probably won't happen. So, I'm not going to say. Well, no, I understand. The second yeah. the new MST3K loaded onto. Netflix, Netflix I, yes. Right there. I, I, so get, I get that. I understand the temptation. All right. Believe. So, uh, Zan, where can they reach you? In, um, as, as they wait for these final 10 days. As, they, as, as we wait for the final 10 days, I am on Facebook, Zan Sprouse. And I am on Twitter, Udinax19. Right. And I am on Instagram, Udinax19. Yes. And that's about all I check. So <laughs> that's 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 pretty much all I check too. So yeah, but uh well, yeah. So please like and follow her. She's awesome. So do yourself a favor, kids. <laughs> Add her to your Facebooks and your Twitter machines and all that. Where can the kids out there find you, Charles? Uh obviously also on the Twitter machine at Charles Skaggs. On the Instagram at Charles Skaggs because hey, it's it was available. Um, <laughs> Facebook, of course. Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus. Oh yeah, I am on the Google Plus. You are on the with, Google Plus with the Udinax nineteen. Yeah. So you guys should all follow Charles too because he's awesome. So cheers to my one hundred sixteen followers on the Google Plus. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm still trying to get to five hundred on Twitter. I'm like. Eight people away. Oh, nice from five, job! Some five hundred. So help me nice out job. here. Give me. If you don't already follow me on Twitter, please follow me on Twitter. That'd be awesome. And of course, my blog, Geeky Things. Damn good coffee and hot. Damn good coffee and hot. Where I talk about Twin Peaks, Ghostwood, and all kinds of cool comics and sci-fi TV goodness. Lots of comic book shows that got picked up this week. That's true. I went and posted a bunch of articles about that. And, of course, I'm going to post more about Twin Peaks as the news rolls in. If, unless, of course, it's spoil, we actually get the news while watching the episode because they haven't told us anything. They haven't told us anything. So maybe we'll do yeah. some live tweeting while we watch the there episode. You go, there you go. Yeah, we, we should mention that uh, um, Zan was kind enough to, is going to be kind enough to host a little viewing party. Yes. At at Casa de Sprouse. The Sprouse House. The Sprouse House. Yep. And so my wife, Lori, and I are going to go hang with Zan and her husband, Chris. And we're going to watch us some Twin Peaks people. It's it's going to be basically our spouses watching us geek out. And they're just yeah, going to be looking around going, yeah, they're excited about something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, well, it's actually good because that way Lori and Chris can kind of bond yeah, they can. You know, like like they they actually have a support system there built in as we watch these episodes. They can. Well, we're, we're sitting and standing there going, <laughs> "Shut up, shut up, shut up! I want to hear everything." <laughs> Lori's going to be like, "Your wife screams a lot." Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be like, "Yeah, she yells at the TV quite a bit." <laughs> I'm just used to it by now. Yeah. yeah. So I would like to. So I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that because I think that's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Well, and we're going to have donuts. And so. thank you. So thank you for the invite. I'm publicly thanking you for the invite because Absolutely. you are awesome for that. Please come over. Yeah. So um, I would like to give a shout out to all of the nice reviews we've gotten lately. Yes. We've gotten, we've gotten reviews. We've gotten people listening and then telling their friends and then their friends are liking us. So I just want to say thank you to everybody to, you know, my friends, Sarah and Naomi, who are listening and telling people, and my friend, Jeremy, who's listening and telling people. 
and, they, and they tell two friends, and and they tell two friends, and so on, and so yeah. on, and so on. But yeah, specifically, I've heard I've heard from uh, Jeremy, Eric, Sarah, and Naomi, and thank you guys for the really nice things you said about the podcast and for telling your friends and hoping their friends like it. And and the review we got, where our our banter got eight out, eight out of ten, which I'm yes. proud of us. For that. And uh, so, yeah. Actually, actually, our banter got nine out of ten. Did our banter get nine out of ten? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I think it was our knowledge got eight out of ten. Well, you know, we're old. So, we're rusty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You got you to, gotta, like, grade us on a curve. You got to give it to us so that most of this is, like, coming from, like, original viewings, though. Yeah. So, and we, to be fair, that. that was our first episode that he re- that was reviewed. That's true. I That's posted. True. I posted the link. If you want to check out the review, you can check it out on on Ghostwood, our Facebook page. Yes. But, That's another thing about Charles, you guys. If you want to know about <laughs> something, Charles is on it. Like the second I found out about the passing of Michael Parks, I went to post something on our page. Charles had already done it. Sorry, so, I don't mean. I don't mean to steal your thunder. No, you're not stealing thunder. You're on it. You're 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 taking care of the biz. Well. So. I don't always get to everything right when I should, but uh, I try. But I, try. I, uh, I appreciate it. Because I want to get the word out. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's another reason why you need to like the Ghostwood um, Facebook page, Ghostwood the Twin Peaks podcast. Yep. And, and thanks for everybody that's been liking the page, so as, as you mentioned. I think we got yeah. like seven likes this week, which is awesome because we're building. And, yeah, and think, the show hasn't even started yeah. yet on, on Showtime, so... If you thought we were geeking out before, yeah. ten days. So yeah, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your possessed people that smash their heads into mirrors. Tell your toothpaste tube. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you know, subscribe to us, review us, like the Facebook yeah, page, yeah. tell your friends. Yep. And also, uh, real quick, I want to give a, a shout out to my other podcasts. Uh, Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast that I do with Jesse Jackson, and uh, the Phantom Zone podcast, which I do with Karen Lindsay here on the Southgate Media Group. And uh, I've been plugging Ghostwood like hell all over the place on those two. So trying to give some love back to my other podcast because I've I've been treating this – this is essentially like – my my pet project that I've wanted to do for so long, as far as like and ever since I heard that Twin Peaks was coming back to Showtime, this is what I've I've wanted to do, and I'm so glad I get to do it with you, Zan. I'm so glad you get to. I'm so glad you asked me to do it with you because we have so much fun, and there's it's always nice to meet somebody who doesn't think I'm a complete and total <laughs> waste waste of my life with my uh, love for this television show. So we're going to share more of that love here in like just about a week and a half when yep. we're going to record episode six after watching new Twin Peaks. Oh, gosh. You, it doesn't even sound real when you say it. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like, yeah, I'm, I'm saying this repeatedly because I'm trying to accept it like like it's real. I mean, if I if I tell myself more, like I keep repeating it to myself, it'll become real somehow, which it, which it will. So yes, you know, logically, it'll, it'll just, all we have to do is wait. Yeah. It'll be so great. Yeah. Just, you know, and then, you know, what's going to happen two weeks after the Twin Peaks episode airs? Yes. Ikea opens here in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a great summer. <laughs> Everything's coming up, Zan. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I threw that in there. I knew you, as a Simpsons geek, I knew you. Yeah. All right. So uh, thanks to everybody for listening. And keep, as they say on MST3K, keep circulating the URL. Yes, keep circulating the <laughs> URL. And thank you very much for the likes and the listens. We really appreciate that you're geeking out with us. And we will see you next time on Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast for New Twin Peaks. Ten days. Ten days. Bye, everyone. 